what's the subspace test? It's essentially a shortcut that allows you to test if a set is a vector space without having to check all the 10 axioms. You can take this shortcut if you know that you, your set, is contained within a larger vector space, V. In order to check that U is also a vector space, you need to check three conditions. Firstly, closedness under addition. Let's say that U1 and U2 are two vectors in our subset U. Then if we add them together, we get another vector in U. Then closedness under scalar multiplication. So let's say A is an element of all real numbers, that will be our scalar. If you do A times U1, this is also contained in our set U. The last condition is that the zero vector of V is contained in U. So we'll call this the zero vector. It's the same for both spaces. This subspace test is useful if you're either proving a set U, for example, is a vector space, or if you're trying to prove it's not a vector space. You don't have to bother considering all the 10 axioms, you can just focus on these three. Find one that's false and then show a concrete example. Let's check if V is a vector space. V is the set containing all two by two matrices with a zero in the top right corner. So we can say that V is included within M22 because we know M22, which is the set of all two by two matrices, is a vector space. We only need to check these three conditions. Let's start by defining two matrices. And we'll say that these matrices are both contained within V because we can clearly see this is true. We have a zero in the top right corner and the rest are real numbers. And then for our scalar, let's say X is an element of all real numbers. We'll need that for condition two. Next, let's check A1 plus A2. We add component wise, we get A1 plus A2, zero plus zero, C1 plus C2, and D1 plus D2. And since the A's, the C's, and the D's were just real numbers, we get another real number and another matrix in this form. Next, let's check closedness under scalar multiplication, multiplying x, our variable, by a1. So when we multiply by a scalar, it goes to each term. So we get x a1, 0 times any scalar is still 0, x c1, and x d1. And because x, a, c, and d are all real numbers, this is also a matrix in our set V. In this case, we want to see that the zero vector of M22 is the same as the zero vector in V. The zero vector of M22 is included in V. What's the zero vector of two by two matrices? Well, this is just zero, 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 zero. <laughs> and in this case, we can clearly see this is included in V, and it has the same property if we were to do 0, 0, 0, 0 plus A1, we would get back A1. Since V satisfies these three conditions, we can conclude that V is a vector space. And to be more specific, we can say that V is a subspace, not just a subset, this is a subset, but a subspace of M22 meaning it's contained in the set of all two by two matrices, M22, and it's also a vector space within that. Now let's check if W is a vector space. W is a subset of M22, so we can use the subspace test and only focus in on these three conditions. So the determinant of a matrix, let's call it ABCD, is AD minus BC. How could we get zero? Well, if we have a zero column or a zero row, we'll get zero. For example, AC, zero, zero, or zero, zero, BD, we also get a zero determinant. And what happens if we add these matrices together? That's the first condition, closedness under addition. If we do A1 plus A2, we end up getting ACD, which doesn't always have a determinant of zero. To show this, we just need a, a concrete example. Let's take the simplest case, A1 equals, with as many zeros as possible, 1, 0, 0, 0, and A2 equals 0, 0, 0, 1. Then if we add them together, A1 plus A2, we get 1, 0, 0, 1. What is the determinant of this new matrix? AD minus BC, so 1 times 1 minus 0 times 0, which is 1. 
which is not zero. So therefore this new matrix is not included in W, therefore W is not a vector space. It's still a subset of M22, but it is not a subspace.